This podcast deals with disturbing subject matter. Listener discretion and headphones are advised. It's time to open the door to your mind. Sit back and listen to true horror. But be careful of what you allow in. Because it's time to go through the fog. I'm Dark Hero, and this is my story, Delicious. I have a small vlog where I go from fine dining to food carts just to try out different things. When I was a kid, my grandma used to live with us and she'd always be cooking for the family. Everything from salads to rice dishes. She made sure that we'd never starve until the day she died. My grandma really put her heart and soul into her cooking and that made me fall in love with food. The meals she made imprinted something onto me. Whenever I start a meal, everything around me starts to fade away. The indistinct murmuring of people, the clattering of silverware, and the mix of aromas coming from the array of foods at a restaurant. When I eat, it's just me and the camera. Pure bliss as I take each bite. The only thing I can hear is my own voice as I describe the flavors to the camera. I feel truly at peace until the last bit of food is done and I stop recording. Then everything comes rushing back. My goal in life is to find the perfect dish. The one that'll fill me with the happiness I felt when my grandma made food for me and my family. One day I found this little hole in the wall on the path I used during my morning jogs. I live in a big city, lived here for years, and I've jogged this route every morning during that time. I know my neighborhood like the back of my hand, but I've never seen this restaurant before in my life. The entrance was in an alley between a bodega and what I thought was an abandoned building. There was a wooden sign over a set of stairs going down with the words delicious engraved on it. It looked so out of place, yet so easy to miss. It's, it's hard to explain. But I wouldn't have been able to see it until I had to stop to tie my shoelaces. I took a deep breath and my nose was hit with a beautiful smell of something something cooking. I stepped towards the entrance, in a trance, as if called by a siren song. I stood at the top of the steps and looked down. It was early morning, but when I looked towards the stairs, they were swallowed by shadows. I made my descent and allowed myself to be taken by the darkness. I followed that wonderful scent down and down and down. I don't know how long I'd been walking. could have been seconds, it could have been hours, but in that darkness, I finally got to an end. I couldn't see a thing, but I instinctively knew that there was a door in front of me, so in the dark, I reached out for the handle and pulled it. I was snapped back to my senses when I realized that the smell I was following had disappeared. I looked into the interior of the restaurant. It was a sushi bar with a counter and one chair in front of it. The place was so quiet aside from a buzzing light that flicked over the one seat. The walls and floors were cracked concrete and it made me feel like I was in prison. Hello? I called out, only to be met with my own echo. It seemed like I was the only soul here, yet I walked forward and sat down. In front of me, there was a set of dark red chopsticks. I picked them up and They made my fingertips feel so warm. I looked into the glass fish case to see that it was completely empty. Are you ready to eat? A distorted male voice appeared in front of me and I looked up to see the black shape of a person. It had no features, just a solid mass of Vanta black. Startled, I tried to hop out of my seat, but I couldn't move my legs. It spoke again. Are you ready to eat? The shape was leaning over the glass case towards me, its blank face mere centimeters away from me. 
it kept asking the question over and over and over and over again. Its words were a cacophony of discordant screeching in my ears. I thought that my head would split open, so I screamed out, Yes! Everything fell silent. Then the shape straightened up and began to walk around the sushi bar to me. Its movements were so odd, almost cartoonish as it took long steps. It was right next to me and it quickly grabbed my right arm. Its grip was so tight that I was unable to move a single inch. In its other hand, a knife appeared and in a fast, fluid motion, it swept the blade down. An indescribable, immense pain erupted from my arm and I looked down to see a strip of my skin missing. All that was left was a bloody mass of exposed meat. I looked towards the shape, but before I knew it, the thing was already back behind the sushi bar. I couldn't see over the bar, but I could hear the searing sound of something cooking. It smelled disgusting. It came back around and in his fingers was a strip of what looked like bacon. I gagged at the sight and it started to inch my cooked skin to my mouth. Bile began to bubble up inside me as I turned my head away from it. With its free hand, it grabbed me by my face and pinched to open my mouth. I screamed and screamed, but it was relentless. It proceeded to push what it had cooked into my mouth. It forced every bit of it down. Once everything was inside, it clasped its hand over my mouth. The freshly cooked skin was burning hot, and the juices coated everything it had touched. I wanted to vomit, but a sensation overwhelmed me. It removed its hands from me, and I was filled with peace. A tear began to roll down my cheek as I remembered my grandma's cooking. I chewed the tough skin, my teeth releasing the flavors held within, and I finally swallowed. I looked down at my arm. Blood was everywhere, on the floor, on the counter. I slowly grabbed the deep red chopsticks, and the voice erupted. Are you ready? I nodded my head, and it stepped back to me with a knife in its hand. Over and over, we repeated this process, until there was barely anything of me left. I became a crimson mess that was splattered all over the concrete of this hellish restaurant. And my review of it is... It was delicious. Through the Fog is recorded and edited by Hop. Intro and outro by Katie Kemp. For more stories, go to www.throughthefog.org. We'll be back in two weeks, so keep your eyes on the fog.